Hello Ravens, this is Mrs. Lavoy again, and today our topic is background information, vocabulary, and literary terms for The Cask of Amontillado by Edgar Allan Poe. We're going to start off uh, with the directions on your own sheet of paper. Take notes on the information and vocabulary presented. Be sure to write your name on your paper and hand in your notes next class period. So to begin with, we have our author, Edgar Allan Poe. He was born in 1809 and died in 1849, so he only lived to be about 40 years old. He was an American author, and he was famous for uh, poems and short stories. And one of his most famous poems, in fact, is The Raven. Um, so that's fun to quote around uh, Olathe Northwest, since we're the ravens. But um, essentially, he was known as the inventor of the detective story, a pioneer of science fiction, and the master of the psychological horror story. He was very popular in his day, and he continues to be a very well-known author around the world. Okay, so in our story today, um, the setting involves Carnival in Italy. And Carnival is still celebrated today and looks much the same as it did in post time. It's celebrated in February, and it's uh, several days of street parades, street parties, and costumes. Um, it's celebrated in uh, quite a few countries around the world. Um, it's uh, celebrated in Catholic countries principally. And it is similar in time and purpose to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, but it's not as wild. Now, during Carnival, uh, you'll see people dressed up in what are uh, considered typical Carnival costumes. And you'll see over here on the left, we've got the hat with the cap and bells. It's kind of a jester's hat that's very common. On the right, we have what's known as a roquelaure. And it's a long jacket, although it doesn't have to be as fancy as the one pictured here. And then, of course, the most essential element is the carnival mask, because the idea of carnival is that you're getting all the bad stuff out of your system before you have to behave and deprive yourself for 40 days, um, which is what's known as Lent. And so the idea is that you wear a mask to hide your identity while you're uh, up to no good and doing things you're not supposed to. Okay, so... Amontillado, which is part of our title, and notice that it's the double L is pronounced like a Y as it is with like tortilla chip. That's because Amontillado is a Spanish word, and Amontillado is a type of alcoholic drink. It's a type of sherry from Spain that is very expensive and is considered to be very high quality. It's a drink that only very wealthy people would have enjoyed in Poe's day. And before it is bottled, it is stored in casks or pipes. Casks are large wooden barrels that are laid on their sides and stacked in, in cellars or other underground storage rooms. And you can buy sherry by the cask even today. Um, in some uh, high-class social circles, that's considered very prestigious to buy it that way and to have room to store it that way as well. Um, another part of our story is a catacomb, and a catacomb is an underground area, usually beneath a palace or a church, where wealthy people or prisoners were buried. Um, if you go to Europe um, in modern times, you can go visit catacombs, and it's like going to a museum, and you pay, you know, you buy a ticket so that you can go in and walk around among all the skulls and the dead bodies and stuff. It's kind of creepy, but people like to do it. Okay, so our vocabulary. Um, our first word is connoisseur. It's a noun, and it means an expert judge in matters of taste, and very often it's used to describe an expert in wines. Fortunato is one of our main characters, and Fortunato believed himself to be a connoisseur of fine wines. Gate is our next word. It's a noun, and it's the way a human or animal moves on foot. So the runner had a smooth and quick gait. Azure is an adjective. It just means blue. The background of this page is azure, like the daytime sky. A trowel 
that's a noun. It's a small handheld tool with a flat pointed blade and it's used to apply and spread mortar or plaster. Um, if you have parents who like to garden, you probably have a trowel somewhere in your garage. Um, Montresor used a trowel to build the wall that imprisoned Fortunato. Montresor is our other main character. Next we have colossal. It's an adjective. It means extraordinarily great in size or extremely large. The George Washington Monument is a colossal structure. Now we have our vocabulary that is from the yellow packet that you received in class and this is the freshman vocab list of all those terms that we use in writing. Um, our first word today is compare. It's a verb. It means to estimate, measure, or note the similarity or dissimilarity between. Then we have contrast. It also is a verb. It means to differ strikingly to be very different. Then we have comprehend. It's another verb that means to understand. Support is a verb. It means to use facts, statistics, examples, quotes, and anecdotes to develop a topic and convince the reader. And then finally we have our literary terms. We have three this week, but two are review terms. First we have setting. That's just a reminder that it's the time and place of a story's action. We have the imagery. Imagery is the descriptive words and phrases that create a picture in the reader's mind or words that appeal to hearing, smell, taste, and touch. So we have um, an example with sight, the manor house melted into the ink black sky. Touch, another cobweb stuck to her cold clammy skin. Sound, her heart thumped wildly when she heard the scratching at the door. Taste, she could not get the metallic taste of fear out of her mouth. And finally smell, the foul smell of dead mice hung in the air. Now our new term this week is mood, and mood is the atmosphere an author creates for a story. Authors use imagery and the setting to create the mood. The mood can be suspenseful, mysterious, pleasant, or really related to any emotion. And that's all today, Ravens. See you tomorrow in class.